Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which as usual has pumped up in the past 24 or so hours. And I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to be kicking this video off with news concerning Narve 12, because a leaker on Chip Hell, whose name is Zoo, he is actually an employee of AMD, supposedly, has leaked that Narve 12 is not what we expected it to be. The common consensus is that Narve 12, well, the common consensus up until this point anyway, is that Narve 12 is the big Narve, designed to compete with NVIDIA's higher-end GeForce cards. So, for example, the RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti. But there has been precious little solid information concerning what this GPU will be. Outside of a few driver entries, we'll get into those in just a moment, there haven't even been benchmarks which would give us some indication of performance. Back in July of this year, AMD launched uh, the RX 50, uh, 700 and 5700 XT, which compete very well with NVIDIA's uh, mid-range GPUs, such as the RTX 2060s, 2060 Super, and 2070 GPUs. And, well, now they are launching Narve 14, the RX 5500 series for both desktop as well as mobile. But, once again, despite the fact it's so close to the end of the year, but yet, yeah, there are still so few details concerning Narve 12. Oh, and this is also an article, so if you want to go ahead and check that out, I'll of course link it, as usual, in the description of this video, if you do prefer the written word. So, let's start things out by going to one solid piece of Narve 12 information that's actually from AMD themselves. It's a driver entry for Linux. This entry does reference specifically Narve 12, and we can see that there are actually a couple of architectural differences which seem to be indicated with this driver. But the one I want to bring your attention to is num underscore sdp underscore interfaces equals 16. This is basically a reference to the bus width. I did go into this much deeper in my uh, AMD ray tracing and GPU plans video and article. I'll link them in the description of the video. But basically, Narve 10 is also SDP interface 16. And if you recall, Narve 10 is a 256-bit bus running using GDDR6 at, of course, 14 GBPS. But SDP interface can also be a reference to high bandwidth memory too. But at the time, I didn't really believe that that was a likely scenario. Because the theory was, from all of the leaks and all of the rumours, that this card was for consumers. Therefore, high bandwidth memory 2 was just not really what you would expect on a consumer level card. It would just increase the, the cost too much. Therefore, a GDDR6 uh, based GPU, albeit with faster clocked memory, was the most likely scenario. However, there has been a post, as I mentioned earlier, from a chap called Zoo on Chip Hell. He is a technical employee at AMD, and according to him, Narve 12 is essentially Narve 10, albeit featuring high bandwidth memory 2, and curiously, designed sp specifically for Apple. Now, I've personally heard very little from my own sources regarding Narve 12. Indeed, when it comes to the higher performance tier of GPUs, the conversation has typically revolved around Narve 2X. We'll get more to that in just a moment. And it also raises several questions for the information that we've had up until recently. Not least of all that several IDs have actually been spotted by Kamichi on Twitter. And of course all of the Linux entries and so on regarding Narve 12. Machine translation is pretty sketchy to be totally honest. And therefore I asked the retired engineer on Twitter to provide me a translation because, well, he can speak Chinese. I would really love to be able to speak Chinese and Japanese as a slight aside. I think it would be really helpful for my job. Plus as well, I won't lie, I kind of have a thing for anime. But anyway, um, I'm going to read out the quote for Baton that he provided me. Uh, still remember something called Narve 12. The spec are the same as Narve 10, at least for the WG count. As for the reference, it's not hard, as, as for the difference, excuse me, it's not hard to guess. 
Apple is not short of money. GDDR6 is not good enough for them. Oh, and as a bit of a bonus, you also confirm the existence of Fred Ripper. It seemed that he did have a bit of a typo in his original tweet, but according to the translation, no need to doubt, 64 core Fred Ripper, it definitely exists. This is something that I've personally heard extensively from a couple of my sources. AMD have not revealed any details to the press of yet, at least to my knowledge. Indeed, when we sat in the press call for the Ryzen 9 3950 and the Fred Ripper series brief, there wasn't even a hint of it. They simply pointed out that the TRX40 platform does have additional uh, potential for I.O. and uh, a few other bits and pieces, but there was no mention at all of the uh, 64 core Fred Rippers anyway. So all of this does seem to indicate that Narve 12 will not have additional compute units and essentially be the same GPU as Narve 10, albeit with some tweaks for high bandwidth memory too. This leaves us with actually a lot more questions to be totally honest, such as the usage scenario of the GPU, why high bandwidth memory too, what tweaks there will be for the architecture, and of course what AMD will do to counter NVIDIA's higher end GPUs now. So recently there was actually a report uh, from the same uh, website, although from a different user, that Narve 2X, the second generation of uh, RDNA, will actually be partially revealed, maybe previewed or something like that, at CES 2019. Bear in mind that that's quite early next year. And I covered this in a video yesterday, and during that video I basically said, well, if we're going to be hearing so much about this new architecture, why are they doing that when Narve 12 has not even launched? It was, it was definitely a head-scratcher. I mean, we've seen AMD cancel GPUs when they are pretty close to being final in design. For example, the RX 490 says hi. But yeah, it was just really puzzling. Maybe they had delayed the second generation a little more, but they wanted to at least kind of give us some hints of what was upcoming. Who knows? But now, perhaps we actually get a better picture of what's going on internally. So if you recall, one of my sources had told me that Narve 10 had been designed to be a mid-sized die because of concerns of both yields and the challenges of creating a new architecture. In fact, one of my sources told me that the design of the GPU and the bring up of it had actually been a nightmare. This is actually similar to what Jim at Adore TV had also told me separately. And another one of my sources told me that the uh, GPU had been delayed heavily. So we certainly know that the first generation of RDNA, well, I say no, but it looks very certain anyway, that the first generation of RDNA had let's say some issues because of not only the new architecture but also the shrunk process. Also rather fascinatingly and something else I covered yesterday, AMD themselves have recently confirmed that the original Zen architecture had a lot of tweaks and enhancements that were left on the drawing board because they ran out of time. These eventually made their way into subsequent architectures, particularly Zen 2. So perhaps the same could be said for the RDNA architecture as well. Now, what follows is lots of speculation, but I do wonder if AMD created the first generation of RDNA to basically work out the kinks in their design process. This would essentially mean that they treated the first generation of RDNA as, well, I guess you could say like the Polaris series, and then the second generation would be the higher performance tier, although of course we could also presume they would have lower performance GPUs as well, which would compete in the low slash mid range. AMD have also confirmed that they will be using TSMC's 7NM Plus process, and there are rumours that we're going to see improvements in terms of architecture and efficiency, outside of, of course, the shrunk process. Going back to my own sources for a moment, I was told by one source that Narve 23 is an NVIDIA killer. I'm actually finding a bit more out regarding that from my source, but I'll cover that in a separate video. But whether this reference is in terms of pure performance or pricing, well, it's still unknown to be honest. And AMD themselves have confirmed, however, ray tracing in support for the next generation of RDNA. Also, bear in mind that Microsoft have recently confirmed DirectX R Tier 1.1. 1 
This comes with numerous enhancements and performance to ray tracing and new uh, features to the appy. I'll probably go into this much more extensively in the future because Microsoft have started to reveal many more details about that. But basically speaking, it's going to be really interesting with the timing, given that the rumored implementation of ray tracing for RDNA second generation is said to be hybrid design. Microsoft are said to also be leveraging the same basic architecture for the Xbox, although my own sources have told me that the Xbox Scarlet does have better graphical ray tracing capabilities than the PlayStation 5. I actually covered this in the past. So this brings us to, I suppose, some type of conclusion. Whether Zoo is right or not, who knows? At the end of the day, it's not an official word from AMD. And I would encourage taking this with at least some measure of salt. But he is supposedly an employee of AMD and has had a pretty good track record in the past, to put it mildly. What we can say for absolute certain is that the next year or two will be a massive hotbed in terms of graphics. And AMD will face increased competition thanks not only to NVIDIA but also Intel. Recently, I went into an in-depth dive of what Intel have disclosed with their XE architecture. And Ponte Vico, the 7nm derivative of XE, is looking to be incredibly impressive. Although, ironically enough, the gaming GPU, which launches next year on the 10nm process, we actually know less about than Ponte Vico. Uh, just Intel things. Meanwhile, NVIDIA are going to be launching the next generation GeForce at some point. I say it in such a tone because we really know very little about Ampere. In fact, some people are, you know, just very adamant that it's not even Ampere for GeForce. But who knows? What we do know is that there are a lot of rumours now circulating that we will see, quote, massive, uh, end quote, improvements to both ray tracing as well as traditional rasterization performance I'll try to remember to not be an idiot and actually link that article in the description of the video as well. Because, let's face it, NVIDIA, well, they got a lot of thrashing in terms of the public eye for ray tracing and Turing. And I don't just mean the performance and the pricing of the architecture here either. I actually mean the implementation and how long it took for software to come out. I mean, even outside of being a reviewer for a moment, I'm taking that out of the equation. And I won't lie to you, I was playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider, rather enjoyed it, and then stopped for a while because I heard a couple of announcements concerning the ray tracing implementation. I was like, eh, you know what, I'm going to wait, enjoy the rest of the game with ray tracing enabled. And it just did not seem to get a patch for ages. And by the time it did get patched, I had a problem in my save game, it went back, and then I was like, screw it, I'm not going to complete Shadow of the Tomb Raider then for a while. Um, basically, what I'm saying is it just took a long time for them to actually leverage ray tracing. It's starting to get a bit better now, but I know I use this example like 200,000 times, but if you look at the game like Control, it's like, do you want high frame? Well, okay, high frame rate is a bit of a strong word with Control at high resolution, but do you want a reasonable frame rate and native 4K? Or would you prefer DLSS and ray tracing? Because essentially that's the options that you've got. So, yeah. I've gone more in depth into what I think they could do to improve ray tracing performance in numerous videos in the past. But basically speaking, AMD are going to be in a very interesting position next year. And I really look forward to seeing what they are planning with the next generation architectures. I know there's a lot of skepticism concerning how AMD can compete with NVIDIA in the next generation. And this is something that I want to go more in depth on in the future uh, when I learn a little bit more information from my sources. But the fact is that AMD don't necessarily need to compete with NVIDIA in terms of raw performance to outclass them. They can simply outclass them in terms of the price to performance ratio. At the end of the day, if uh, AMD are charging, let's say, 700 US dollars for a GPU, and AMD's rivals are charging, let's say, a thousand US dollars for a GPU that's, yes, a little bit faster, but also, you know, 300 bucks more, AMD will definitely have 
a lot of fans is also the fact that AMD's architecture will be in the next generation of consoles. This could also be very interesting with ray tracing implementation. So, yeah, I guess the next year or so is going to be very telling for both companies. And now let's move over to the PlayStation 5. Recently, there was a patent discovered that seemed to indicate that the PlayStation 5 would have some type of storage cartridge. Although, there were precious little details that we could ascertain from the patent itself. So, was it some type of storage device for the PlayStation 5? Or would it be for a new portable PlayStation? Well, rather interestingly, a second patent has been discovered, which Sony have registered. And in this particular patent, which has been discovered by Let's Go Digital, SIE Japan has actually provided several more images of the cartridge itself. And we can see eight connectors inside of what appears to be some type of SSD cartridge. There's also a Japanese description which accompanies this pattern. Let's Go Digital have translated this and have said, and I quote, This is a recording medium which can record various data, such as a character, an image, an animation, a sound, and a program. By loading the opening provided by the game console with the tip end part, which is plurality of the pins of the cartridge were provided, the various data recorded on this cartridge can be read, end quote. This seems almost confirmation that the PlayStation 5 will use cartridges, which essentially are proprietary SSDs to house data. So if you want to upgrade the storage in your system, you will need to plonk one of these in. This is not going to be like the PS4, for example, where you can just plonk in any SSD that you would like, or any drive that you would like, providing it meets the requirements such as form factor. I guess it makes sense because otherwise you could have a user that would put in an SSD that would be too slow and given games on the PlayStation 5 and presumably the Scarlet as well seem to really require fast read and write time for these open world environments we can't have a drive which would be way too slow to uh, feed the data to the system. Then again, though, for users, it would be interesting to see what Sony will be charging for one of these proprietary drives. Hopefully, we learn more about this soon. Anyway, with any luck at all, you've enjoyed the video. Apologies for my voice sounding a little croaky at the moment. Unfortunately, I'm fighting off a bit of a cold. So, with any luck at all, that doesn't turn into the bubonic plague over the next couple of days. Uh, but... I thank you very much for watching the video, and if you've enjoyed it, of course, uh, subscribe for much more content and give the video a like, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.